Hi, welcome to the channel. My name's Pete. On this series, we're covering the Halifax High Line, and I am on the site of St. Paul's railway station, Halifax, or what it used to be. Now you notice these behind me there, and they stop here. I'll turn the camera around, and I'll tell you a little bit about this place, and I'll show you what that was. So I have got permission to be here. I'd like to thank the gentleman who's let me on to film this. So this is the site of St. Paul's Railway Station, also known as Halifax St. Paul's. Uh, they served this area around here where we are now. Now that wall is an original feature and where I'm stood would have been the walk down to the station. There is a photograph taken from around here which I will put up for you. Now this railway station originally opened in September 1890 and it was closed on the 1st of January 1917 and it ceased to operate. Now there's literally nothing left, it's all demolished, built on, or been demolished again and built on again. Now, I did read that there was a car showroom here at one time but that's gone and this is all now called the Broadway Shopping Centre with some industrial units as well. But here, right there where that stops there, this would have come this way and that would have been St Paul's Station. Now we've had a look up there and you can see where that ends. And if we just go around a little bit here, we can see some stonework sticking out. I don't know if you can get that. There is some stonework there and a bit of rubble poking out the wall and that is where the station was. Now this station had a number of sidings, it had two platforms and it also had a turntable and I will go somewhere and show you what's left and there are some shots of the platform. Bearing in mind this was the station here so the platform was at the other side of this building, part of this building's partly on where it would have been and it has been backfilled a little bit as well. So there are some shots going this way and we will go there next. The station was over there behind this wall. This wall is an original feature. Whilst that wall has been repaired a bit there and built up there, this is more or less the original station access and we've got original walling going around there. Now it, all's, now it has all been infilled because it was below that level. And we'll get around the back of these buildings and we'll show you what's left. Here we are around the back, the original railway walling right up there. The retaining wall has been replaced down here and the platforms were here. More or less I'm stood at the end of the platform. There are a couple of photographs taken from around where I am and I'll put those in so you can just see how much it has changed. As you can see it's completely redeveloped. Lines will have gone off that way, this way would have been sidings and then we, when we get that way there would have been a turntable on the right and then a bridge and we will head towards that bridge after here.
so where we just were was over near that church steeple that you can see just this side of it now all these roofs here all them um, are new builds i say new builds they look like 1970s buildings and this hedge here follows the line of the railway now approximately where that end house is is where the turntable was and then as we go this way that house that you can see there is on the actual track bed and it backs onto a bridge which is where we're heading so we've just come from there this is hopwood lane bridge we can see the steel work is still here the bridge is still here underneath but we can't get underneath because access is through them gardens i might be able to get a better shot of it from that side in that car park there now it's better to ask forgiveness than permission because there's no one there so we'll go over this side now there did used to be a footpath here that's boarded up and that used to go to a mill There, that used to be a public footpath. Now, I don't know if we can see anything of that bridge from here. I think it's more than likely we need to get in that car park. So here I am in that car park at the other side of that bridge. This side is filled in. And I don't know if it's completely filled in because I can't access the other side. But this used to be a cutting. And it would head off that way. Right through where that tank is, right through where them new builds are, over to another bridge. Now, St Paul's Station opened in 1890 and it didn't have many passengers. And it was originally opened as the Halifax High Level Railway, which I do find rather ironic because most of it is in a cutting. And then pre-group and it was the Lancashire and Yorkshire, Great Northern, London Midland and Scottish, and then London Railway and North Eastern Railway. Oh, it didn't have many passengers on. And in 1910, there were 11 departures from St. Paul's, Monday to Fridays, and 12 on Saturdays, and five on Sundays. Most of that would have been industry, not passengers. Now, what you can see here is an old mill and the railway line would have come right through here through that direction there and then we'll catch up with it with another bridge at that side now I've been cheeky I've come and asked at the properties to check out the other side of that railway bridge Ooh, I'm out of puff I can confirm it's mostly filled in, mostly. Um, they tell me there are foxes living in here, so I don't want to alarm them. But I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you what you can see. Where I'm stood is on the trap bed. Now this is what we can see. Still girder bridge, mostly filled in. Concrete plinth at that side. It's just a lot of rubbish in there, isn't it? You can see a little bit more here. In there. You can see it's got a steel support there. And I've got no idea what this shape here was for. Let's have a look. It goes a fair way in. Looks a bit sooty under there as well. I wish I'd brought my torch, could maybe got in a bit further. We can see that there. This is a support, because then when we get to this side, you can also see there's access here for another line. And it's definitely wide enough for another line. And this is all the backfill that we've got. Got conker tree in the way. Uh, I'll just try and get through it. Yeah. Don't worry, it's not just me that does this, it's all YouTubers that put up with that sort of thing. As you can see, it has been used as a bit of a dumping ground. 
and we've got our stone side supports here. This is probably about what we can see. This is the other side with our girder support in there. And that's that railway bridge. I hope you've enjoyed that quick look. We'll move along to the next railway bridge and see what's left of that. Now, just before I leave this railway bridge, there is a photograph taken from that way in front of me, quite high up, and it's got this bridge in shot. So look for that. It's got the turntable in and a bit of the platform. I think there's a tiny bit of station in it as well. So I'll insert that here now. You can look at that while I get over to the next bridge. Now I'm at the next bridge, which is on uh, either Gibbet or Gibbet Street. The line will come left to that chimney and here is the next bridge. Interestingly enough, it's got manhole covers on it. Now it has been completely filled in and it would have gone to a cut in on either side of this bridge. And this is what we have left, the parapet wall on either side. Now if we look over it, as you can see, there's a big mound of dirt there. It's quite literally been filled in on both sides. So our bridge clearly seen here and at that side there, filled in, but we have got a public footpath here. I'm gonna walk up there a little bit and I'll show you what's left of the line up there. So our bridge is there. The railway line would have come across here. This would have all been a deep cut in and we still have an embankment wall down here. That direction is over to the next railway station, which is Pelland Station. And that way is St. Paul's where we've just been. The line is a little bit over three miles. It's got loads of bridges. It's got two major engineering achievements, which we will be filming. And in the meantime, we'll go up, we'll, go, we'll carry on. I just get up to the next bridge until we get up to Pelham Station. We'll see what remains. I'm afraid, uh, excuse the traffic, we are here on Hanson Lane. It's getting busy in the day now. Now you can see the change in brickwork there. That's our railway bridge. Now this railway bridge is on Hanson Lane and goes across to where the angle is there. So we're now going over at an angle. This would have all been a deep cut in again. Now the bridge is filled in and these houses are built on what was once the track bed. The parapet walls are a clue to what was once here. And then what we'll do is we'll get across the road there just waiting for this car to pass. And you can see the angle on this bridge and the size that we're going at. Now over this side, we can actually walk to. It is filled in and it has been reutilized the land. But we can see the other side of the bridge, which is here. This tree is growing in it. Uh, this is the track bed here and it would have been probably from about there to somewhere here two lines coming through now the St Paul station is that way our next station is not too far away and same with our next bridge our next bridge is just there this one behind me that we've just been looking at is completely stone and the other one there looks like it's got an iron top and then just beyond there we will be arriving at our next railway station so we'll get over to that bridge and here we are on Batson Road with our next bridge you can see stonework there this is our iron sidings for the bridge not sidings for trains and that is our track bed completely filled in. I can't get access to it to see what this side's like 
but we can see it's very well filled in. Now the bridge goes across at an angle and that's our other side there. Although it closed to passengers in 1917 it did stay open until 1960 for goods and it did actually die its own natural death. It would have been busy with industry while industry was uh, still milling. Various mills, there was wire mills, flax mills, cotton mills, you name it they did it. Now at this side you can see the cutting still remains. Now there is allotments. Now when this line was opened that wasn't allotments but that was still a bit of spare land and our railway line went up the side there up towards Pelham station. So we've still got the cutting which means all these walls down at either side are original and there we've got our wall for the street and if we look further down there we've got a retaining wall as well which means we can see what is on the other side of this bridge. Now I can't see very well because I can't climb over there because it barbed wires and I can't stick my head over because it barbed wires but what I can do is put you over and I believe it has been bricked up from what I can see. So I hope you got to look at that and then you can see our fence much clearer from here which would have followed round there up to uh, but I, th I think it's Pelham station next uh, and then Pelham lane so we'll head up there now. Now we are following the Halifax high level railway so far it's been in cuttings and I've got inside what is left well of a cutting this is Pelham cutting and it's just as you exit Pelham station which means this behind me here is Pelham railway bridge and we'll look at this in the next episode along with the railway station and believe it or not from here we go straight to this that there that's a bridge with a road well I think it's a road or a pathway underneath it but we'll find out I will get down there because from here it goes to an embankment and just to show you how close we are that's the mains pipe going over there and the bridge is just there at Pelham so if you want to know more about this railway line please hit like share and subscribe and uh, just a little bit of banter on this one what's amazed me is how many mills are close to this railway line even to this day they may not be functioning as mills but the buildings are still standing I've seen one or two in ruin hopefully they'll get bought up and renovated and be kept rather than destroyed down that way away from Pelham we've got another set of sidings coming up a couple of major engineering tasks on this line probably another six bridges to cover and then we enter another cutting now at three miles I think most of it is in cuttings and yet it's called the high level line if you do know why put it in the comments and tell me um, this is going to be three or four videos long this one so if you want to see any more about it like I say like share subscribe see you in the next one right hello welcome back to the channel on this episode which is the second part of covering the Halifax High Line part of the Queensbury lines and I'm on the site of what was Pelham station this was the first station to be opened on this site there isn't a lot left of it that wall there is an original part of the railway station there are some landmarks that we can go to I'm going to put up a a map as we go along so you can get a bit of bearings of what I'm looking at so I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you what I can see now in the last episode we came from Batterson Road which is on the other side of these buildings here 
that wall there is original it ends there and these were all sidings and there was a railway line that went along the side of this building that you can see at the gable end there along here and I'll put that map up now so you can see the end building that we're focusing on at the moment and the railway line running across it up to the wall and as you can see it's all sidings looking back at the map we can see there's a good shed that is approximately where that building is there so we'll just go back to these streets you can see these on the map it's a lot of heavy redevelopment around here it is an industrial estate now so basically it's all been built up filled in there's our streets again and that there is where I think more or less where the goods shed was now we'll go to the other side of there and we'll pick up the station from that point I've gone a little bit beyond where the goods shed was which is approximately there and you can see the curve on the road now there was a siding that followed that curve up to the back of those buildings which were up there that housing estate as you can see that's all raised now nothing to see and we'll get to where the station was please forgive the noise I am next to a busy road that is an original wall for Pelham station I'll show you where the station was shortly we've got the original gate still in position and at that side there it was a busy railway station for the mills and if we just look behind me here we can see one here straight away already disused <clears throat> we're not here to focus on this mill we are here for the station I've crossed the road because I want to get away from that traffic as you can see we've got some original iron work up there it doesn't look like I can see any at the bottom but we do have that fancy iron work there protecting the stonework and that is the same at the other side this is our entrance where we've come in the mill was over the road this was all cattle pens round here and the line used to follow this road round multiple lines really and our shed goods shed was about where that building is there and there is some photographs taken from a roughly where I'm stood so before we leave the station I'll do some photo fades this is where the station actually was now it was one of two stations this was the first one to be opened as I mentioned earlier and this one opened on September the 5th 1890 now it was proposed that this line would go straight through to Huddersfield but it never did it only went as far as St Paul's which is what we covered in the first station again this closed to passengers on the 1st of January 1917 and main reason that was done because of electric trams now we can see the original wall there but that road behind there used to have trams running along it and it was quicker to get anywhere on the trams and it was to use this railway line if you wanted to go to Woodersfield this line would add a half hour journey time now there isn't a great deal left of this station and it remained open for goods up until the 27th of June 1960 but we can see through there shortly that there is a bridge it had an island platform and with the cattle pens that we've just mentioned and then over there through that bridge it goes onto an embankment but what is left are those buildings at the top there which we will go around and see shortly those are stables or were stables for the railway line of course there was no wagons at that time to move anything anywhere or, or should I say lorries with uh, engines internal combustion engines so they used to use horse and cart so a lot of railway stations would have had horses and carts owned and run by the railways and that is one of the few relics left standing on this railway station now I'm going to try and put through these bars here to see what we can see because there is 
some photos stood here somewhere and you can see roughly that bridge and at the top of that bridge where there's that yellow graffiti that's a different colour brick and I will show you that from the top because that had a stairway going down to the island platform that was Pelin Station. So I've been super cheeky and we've got special permission to come on here again. I'm not trespassing, I have sought permission and I am stood where the island platform was. You can see where the railway station was up here and there'd have been a line running down that side and some lines running down this side over into the goods yards up that way. But what we're interested in is this huge structure here. This is probably the third largest structure on the line. We'll also go to the other side after this and when we look at the size of the ironwork on this thing it is huge and I know it's difficult to pick things up when you see things that are this big and you're trying to put them onto film it's so difficult again we've got this here I'm not certain what they are for I think they must be potentially to catch hot cinders deflect them down back to the ground so they don't cause any hazard or anything but that's where the train ran down this side and your platform was there it looks in really good condition under here absolutely privileged to be allowed to come and have a look now I'm going to try and capture as much detail as this as possible and we've got stone surrounding we've got the plinth work at the top there corrugated iron huge huge girders the other side is stone as well and if any of you model makers are out there and want to make this bridge hopefully this footage may help you absolutely this goes all the way along there's not one at the other side but we will cross over to the other side there and this is an absolutely huge bridge and that's our end and we've got the angle at that side that across there would have likely been a water pipe a little bit further on a signal box and a bridge but we'll go over there shortly I have had to come on a different day to get this filming done because I think I'm stood at the other side of that there the other day saying we couldn't get in here but we actually have and I have sought permission I can't stress that enough because people can't wait to point out you're trespassing even if you're not even if they don't understand trespass laws but anyway we've got this reinforcing here now I suspect that is also original I mean, it doesn't look like that's been welded on afterwards to me I may be wrong and we've got one here as well so no that's cast with that and then we'll go around the other side and that's what that looks like there so there's two of those in here and then again all stone and plinth work at that side and we'll continue on the line over there now what I want to quickly draw your attention to is that piece of wood there that could well be a genuine piece of wood from an old 
semaphore signal the only one Now here we are at the site of Pelham Station. It would have been built out onto this. This would never have been a grassed area. But here we can see a clear definition in the brickwork. This was the back of the station where the steps would lead you down onto the island platform. We've got some brickwork there with some ironwork forced into it there. We'll have a quick look over. So our island platform would have been here. We've just been over to them gates looking back this way. Cattle pens over there. Good shed over there. Multiple lines splitting off. And up there we'll just have a quick look at what was the stables. So looking back again at where our station was stood around here somewhere with our steps down onto the island platform that is quite a big bridge almost tunnel but it's a bridge and there's the ironwork at the other side which we'll get to shortly now these are what were the stables so this is what's left of the stables the gentleman who's working here has kind of let me on these will be your gate posts in. Now our station was over this parapet wall here. And what we can do is we can have a look down and get the station from a different angle from up here. Would have been an island platform down there. And that's where your stairs down would have been. Now to focus on the stables, all railways would have had stables nearby at some point, or most of them. As you can see the original building is still here. And if we look on here, we have got a hoop there for tying horses up, an original feature. I'll go around that side there. We were just over there. This is what this side of the building looks like. Now as you can see we've got a little step out there and we've got huge doorways here. I suspect this might have been a support for a crane that would have swung either side and potentially a platform that came out for loading and unloading horse carts. A lot of changes to the outside of this building. I can't go on that side, I've not got permission to go over there but I have here but it is more or less a mirror reflection. You can see a bit of brickwork over there as an arch. A piece of brickwork here that was an arch. And that would have been original features. There is another section there that sticks out like this one. So I don't actually know if there would have been cranes balanced on those or if they were inside the building. Now I'd just like to thank the company for letting me on here, they're really polite, really nice people. I'm guessing if you're out in Halifax and you need somewhere to have a motorcycle fixed or your truck, come here. We'll just have a quick look over this way. That's our station. All these were the good yards. And then right over there, beyond the chimney, is heading back towards St Paul's but we are going to be going this way we're going to catch up the other side of the bridge there is the gate open there I will ask if I can come through and film the underside of this bridge if I can't then we'll be at the other side almost immediately from there we have our first signs that we are on an embankment we've got a bridge this side stonework clearly visible, clearly remaining there. But then when we look at the other side, no stonework, but there is a fence and a garden. So we will investigate this. This stonework is in really good condition. So where does this bridge go? I suspect it goes off at an angle. 
we'll go down we'll have a look and we'll come back and we'll film the rest of this wall on it we're going down this is where we were just up there now this is a huge huge structure it's difficult to see sometimes on video just how big some of these structures are and how far things are down there so i'll get down structure and see what it actually is now i can't tell you how steep that was you can see my footprints down there and i slipped and went down and asked now somebody who will be very disappointed that i didn't film that but this was a public footpath it's all gone now you can see the walls here and this huge structure is for a public footpath it used to be access for the workers for a mill that used to exist around here well, i think it's a bit more that way actually called shrogs shrogs wire mill so i'll get up to here and let us have a look at this huge huge arch for a footpath now i can't stress the height on this thing it is massive four stories high something like that we've got a bit of repair work to the brickwork in here and i was right it does go off at a slight angle i mean just look at it that's massive here we are underneath this huge huge arch four stories high maybe a bit of modern brickwork for repair so it's still a used footpath but all the mill workers would have come down here now i don't quite know why they built it that high when they do these things with a lot of infill we'll get to the other side and we'll have a look back now i've made it to the top at the other side and we can see we've got five cores of brick around the arch beautiful brickwork here huge pillar there and it looks like it's all been possibly lost at that side so that's only small we'll get onto the trap bed so i've made it on top of the bridge this huge parapet wall that you see here i wouldn't like to guess how long it is sometimes i think i should bring a tape measure and i'd be able to drop it down there but i don't think i'd have a tape measure long enough because that is more than 100 feet i'm sure which would make it pretty high beautiful arch underneath here i'll hang you over to show you how deep that is down there and it narrows so it must be at the edge of a valley and the wall at that side the parapet wall must only be 15 20 feet long something like that and i'll turn the camera around i'll show you how wide this track bed is because it is wide here the two main tracks ran through there and approximately where i'm stood a couple of a couple of feet this way there was another siding that went onto some buffers there is a photograph i think somewhere of, of this section that we're about to go to after this bridge in between the next one and you can see the parapet walls of them both i'm not going to be able to match it up because i can't stand where it is if it's private land and not only that you won't be able to see anything anywhere because of the trees and the overgrowth so let's uh, carry on so there's our parapet wall what a lovely view for a working line this would have been and there you go so i'll just show you what that was like over there. there's a couple of original features i want to show you we'll get to the end of this parapet wall here this is where the siding was but we've got this bit of original fence in there for your safety not that anybody would have been or should have been walking up here it doesn't go all the way down it just goes down to there and then you can see how small that section of wall is at that side so we're going to continue on our track beds up that way this looks like where this siding ended well it is where it ended just after this bridge 
and we're going to continue on up there and I'll show you what we come to next. I've not walked far, probably about 50 yards down there but we can see already narrow track bed and here is our next bridge. This one I believe goes over Bracken Bed Lane and again it is a long way down but what we'll do is there's somebody been looking over here so we've got that there I can just show you how far down that is there we go and again I will go down there and I'll show you this bridge from the underside but while I'm up here we'll just check everything that's here and I'm constantly looking at the ground to see if there's any signs of coke from the fireboxes when they were cleaning them out and this is the bridge at the other side a bit of iron work there which we'll be able to see that from below as well and this side I may not be able to get to but I will try no there's no access to the edge of that side meantime we've got a beautiful old road there footpath our track bed continues on this is the bridge under bracken bed road or lane it's huge and it's a busy road so sorry about the traffic noise you can see down here now what they've done is they've built it really wide this is what you would call a narrow coach road but the future proof for this one look how wide that is there I mean you can even see it widens up with that car just there so built for the future never lasted that long and the road around it certainly never got widened it's still an old coach lane so stone blue engineering brick really wide but what I noticed on the way down here was the nice ornate stone carvings at the end but up there we've got a wooden railway sleeper the chair holes in so it's probably from this line and we'll move on to the next bridge so the part of West Yorkshire I'm in is incredibly hilly lots of valleys there is loads of railway tunnels in this area and that side you can see we've got a valley and then back at this side here we're in a cutting and we're already in a cutting at this side as well straight through rock I'm looking at them I'm wondering if there's any drill holes or anything like that if there is they've probably got filled up with soil and got those um, shrubberies and trees starting to grow out of them they've built a bit of a retaining wall at this side you can see that down there and a piece of dry stone wall in at that side probably to support that rock that's above it there's no other reason that they would have been done except for when the railways were here okay I'll switch the camera off if I see anything interesting I'll turn it back on as I'm walking down here I've come across a few people that are walking the dogs up here I'm still on the trap bed and it's clearly a popular walk because it's well trodden look at that behind me there now unfortunately when a lot of these railways closed there wasn't much future foresight going on it's about saving money trying to save British Rail this one did die of a natural death but even then there wasn't the foresight to save these railway lines as rights of way because this is a really nice little walk and I hope you can see that behind me and 
you're getting the feeling for that you know the built walls in there to support the railways the embankments that's got a series of walls in there if I turn round I'm hoping you can see those to support the cutting now I'm not certain why it was called the Halifax High Railway I just think it was a name that was chosen it might be considered high if you look at this I mean that side's an embankment and this side here oh you won't be able to see that but that side is a cutting right down there now it looks like I have to figure out where the trap bed actually goes I think it goes to a garden and I think I might have to stop filming it there yeah so I'm still on the trap bed got some original fence in there as we approach, approach um, another bridge I think this one is church lane pedestrians only now that there backs onto a private garden there's somebody working in it so I'm not going to be able to go through it anyway but here I will try and get down there it looks like there's a footpath around here so I can come back and fill this bridge and I believe this one was Church Lane like I said it was just a public footpath to access what was the mills on this side you can see there's a pond down there I don't know if that's just a flooded area or an old mill pond so what I'll do is we'll go down we'll have a look at this bridge and then I'll go back to the car we'll jump in it and we'll pick the line up where we're allowed to walk on it again there's our railway line going straight through their greenhouse through their garden but look at this bridge we'll go down we'll have a quick look at it this is literally as close as I'm going to get because that is so steep and all this is so wet and full of leaves that I cannot get down there without slipping now with it being cobbles like it is I will do myself a mischief and it will take ages for any anybody to come and rescue me but we can see that a beautiful tall archway and it's such a small bridge now I don't know what the thinking was of doing that because normally they would do fairly small arches and just infill it with rubbish so I can't imagine I can't imagine that being checked well I don't know maybe they just dug it out and uh, wanted lots of light through so that people felt safe any ideas on why they did this or if it's just the architectural design of this line for uh, uniform bridges all the way through let me know so where we left the track bed with the gardens is on the other side of this lot here and our track bed is following that road more or less and then coming straight across here that's one side of a bridge and that is the other side of the bridge here you can see the walls that's the edge of the bridge so the line would have gone across here now this has all been filled in and difficult to identify what's what but this is definitely the bridge and the trap bed would have gone there so we'll have a quick look down here this is our first destroyed bridge that we've come across but this line does have some really special features now that is where one of the pillars would have been the line would have been across here and then we've got another pillar there now we can see it there this is where it would have been We'll go to, all the way down the other side of this green lane it's actually called green Royd lane and we can see how the railway have built it up all the way down there all the way to build this bridge which is now gone we still have some original iron work up there and this is where we shall pick up in the next video. See, 
sleepers two of them i'll show you those shortly the last episode we went to the collapsed bridge which is at the other side of there i can't walk on there because that's private land but i've got access to this wood lane bridge huge structure i'll go underneath it and show you that as well in the meantime hope you enjoy this episode we'll carry on on the halifax high line now there's one of the sleepers that i was just talking about yeah it's completely rotten but i do suspect these have been here since the line shut look at the condition of them absolutely rotten through like sleepers do and we've got woodwork at that side there and that side now that side there has got railings across the top i suspect that parapet wall has collapsed down because this is what it should look like i'll give you a view off i'll give you a view off the top of this bridge there we go and that is the way we're heading through there there is a little gate all on that bit there which we will go through and we'll pick the line up just through there so i've come down underneath wood lane bridge now i'll turn the camera around we'll go under the arch we'll have a look and there's old stone gateways here we'll have a look at those too the bridge is underneath here now down there there are two gate posts and this track i'm gonna keep my eye on that because that looks like it might have been railway property at one time i don't know how far we're going to get down here but we will try and then uh, we'll see what happens but just before we go we've got some uh, old concrete fence posts here and they are literally dotted all the way down there as well and we're going to go that way that is where we've just come from wood lane bridge it is surprisingly clear as you can see but the track has been built on here which looks like well it is it's an o2 mobile phone mast and we've got our o2 symbol there our track goes on it looks like it now goes into a cutting this is what I thought our little access roadway was. Down there, you can see the fence posts here. There must have been a farmer's crossing here of some description. We've got big old railway posts there. Hole in the gate there. So likely a farmer's crossing. I'm on an embankment and now I'm going into a dip, into a cutting. So I think our next set of sidings are Webster's Maltings. Watch out for Webbo. Remember that Yorkshire Bitter? This is where it was brewed, Halifax. We've got tracks here, so people are using this, but I also know that this um, viaduct has been renovated. So I don't know how close we can get to it, if at all. But as you can see, we've got a nice, beautiful cutting here. 
there's a building facade that you can see there that is where some sidings went off into the maltings either side of us in the cutting a little bit further down you can see it's just rock face that they've had to blast out as you can see it's quite wide here this would have been going on for three tracks now so one would go off to the brewery and then it would also curve round to the right to get onto the viaduct if you go onto Google Earth you can follow me and if you go by side by side maps you'll be able to see the old railway lines going off into the Maltins as you can see this is fairly freshly chewed up I don't quite know what they've been doing here but we've got our structure now I don't understand what this was I suspect it was a bridge of some sorts I'm not certain but this is where the tracks diverged off to different ways for each other now if you look at that it does look typically bridge like and I will get up there to try and have a look at this and I've been to the other side of here and I've been to the Maltins it's all renovated there are no it's not a brewery anymore we have another foot in here and it looks like this was possibly a bridge going to the Maltins through there so the track went straight on here a couple of sidings off there was a buffer here but through there you can see that big glass panel that is where railway line used to go through the Maltins and go about 100 150 yards through to the other side it's businesses now is that and the building you're looking to the right here is private property I've been on there and I've been in that building and there is absolutely nothing remaining to indicate there was ever a railway there other than knowing a bit of history and a giant hole through the building now our viaduct is over that way so I'm going to get on top of here I'm going to see if we can access it that way so I've just found this on the bridge or the remains of the bridge BRB what does that mean help me people uh, brewery railway bridge maybe Halifax Highline 05 I'm not certain why it got knocked down uh, maybe it was unsafe but there is a pile of rubble here you've got the copings off the top there structural bricks here another big coping there you can tell by its chamfer at the edge there I'm going to get up there I'm going to see if we can see anything up there here I am on top of the bridge definitely was an old bridge as we found and there's a wall either side going up to it and our railway line goes through there so we'll try and access that here I am at the other side of the demolished bridge sadly I don't know why it got demolished if anybody knows let me know whether it was something to do with this housing site behind me I don't know but as you can see it's a big old cut in it's wide and we had that centre stanchion for the bridge now two lines would have come off where I'm stood and another line would have gone off at the other side of that uh, parapet wall not parapet wall su uh, supporting wall and off into Webster's Maltins put a picture of that up for you now Webstead Maltins had three lines a loop and a line went into and through the building through that little um, pothole that you can see to about 150 meters to the other side this brewery was founded in 1838 by a chap called Samuel Webster know some of the older people here may remember Webster's Bitters this is where it's from and it operated with the Fountainhead Brewery in Halifax which is what that's called there magnificent building I can't really see anything of it through here but I have put some pictures up for you to have a look at it now, it was a light mild a New Yorkshire bitter and this place closed down in 1996 now I can remember Webster's bitters in the green can 
with it closing in 1996, I suppose it may have something to do with the uh, trendy alcohol pops and all that thing of the 90s, when rave culture in the early 90s was on its rise. And younger people, as, such as myself at the time, were not drinking bitters. Maybe the odd John Smith, but that'd be about it. Maybe the odd Guinness, but otherwise it was designer lagers and uh, Alka Pops. Now, where we're going is down there. That is towards Wheatley Viaduct. It looks to be some kind of path through there. I don't know if you can see that path there, just under that tree, through here. Let's get there. We've not come far from our bridge through there, which was a cut in at the other side. And now we're on a huge embankment. I say huge, easy 40 feet. Steadily climbing 50 feet, and I know it goes a lot steeper than that. I found a wooden fence post here. Fairly rotten, fairly old. Could that be railway? Could it be to do with Webster's? It's only a guess, we'll continue on. Looks like there could be a clearer footpath further up. A little bit further along, and I am literally right on the edge of the embankment, as you can see. And it gets even narrower up there. I'll try my luck, I'll see what happens. But all what's indicating to me is that that house is built on the track bed and all these gardens here and another couple of houses are all built on track bed. Now I've just come through that lot from the Maltings. And do you remember that little road that I talked about? It's down there. You can probably see a tree trunk here and a wall there and a long abandoned bridge under here. And then it would go through round to there and then out onto, uh, I think it's called Old Boy Road or Boy Road. Meantime, I'm trying to get closer to this viaduct. So I found the viaduct. It is currently under renovation. So there is absolutely no access to it from this side. The door is locked up. But what I can do is probably pop my camera through and you can see what's going on. It was investigated for bats before they started restoring the viaduct and renovating it. It's a million pound project according to the website but according to the BBC it's a multi-million pound project so take your pick. It depends if you like the BBC or not with their uh, propaganda. That's a bit political for a, a walk in a railway line. Now it's the highest, it's at 100 feet. These is, this is why it's been repaired, look at this, coming off there. That's this side, I'll see if we can get some better shots for it. That's where we were, just there, where you can see this panelling. There is literally no getting round it, basically. It is a Grade 2 listed building. It's not used as a footpath or a footway. It is just a very expensive ornament to maintain. Now there were supposed to have been bats on here but they did have it inspected, there were no bats. So that enabled them to continue this and it's supposed to be going on until March 2023. I have approached the construction company to see if I can gain access to this and they can tell me a little bit about what's going on. But I've not heard anything back and that was about three weeks ago as I was filming this in um, mid-November. If I do hear anything back, I will come back and we will film it if that opportunity arises. We'll just continue on a little bit further. Now passengers did close on this line in 1917 with the odd excursion up until the 30s I believe we will try and get down there to get some shots from it above but so surveys have been carried out on this and the plan was to cut back the vegetation as you can see most of that's already been done looking through that 
doorway what we did is going to be repairing brickwork and masonry and fractures between the arches and soffits and the keystones on there as well they're actually called voiceurs I believe voiceurs but the top one is called the keystone but all the other ones are also having some of those repaired the project is said to cost a million pounds they're going to be installing a waterproof system as well a full length of the viaduct deck uh, to carry out drainage and pr help protect the structure now that's a million quid to fix that you can barely see it because of all the trees around here it's a million pound ornament pedestrians can't use it as you can see how difficult it was for me to get through that to just where I am now and then at the other side it goes into a tunnel weekly tunnel which we'll be covering as well but the other end of the tunnel is blocked off so you can't cross the viaduct and through the tunnel something like this needs to be open to the public it needs to be accessible especially if you're spending a million quid on it okay let's see if we can get down underneath now I'm not on any trespassed areas this is open, it's open to the public where I am now this is the viaduct I believe it's a hundred feet at its highest point it's absolutely lovely but these trees just ruin it now if you're going to spend a million quid on a viaduct come on actually make it a feature as you can see there look they've got support rigging up there and support rigging up there probably to start putting platforms up so that people can work from them start changing these stones it's blue brick underneath the arch and it is beautiful and down there is where the river goes underneath it We'll have a quick look at this side now it is diverted off from this one to this one here and there's a weir there and I know there was a mill up there it no longer exists it's uh, all been demolished and new builds put up there but that old bridge down there and the weir and the diversion of this to here would have been for water supply for that mill Let's go back to the viaduct. Absolutely beautiful. I'm not going to go on top of it. I'm not going to attempt to go on top of it because if the people do get in touch with me, I'll be quite privileged. You can see there's some bricks missing there. We're going to be replacing that. When I did come down and ask them about gaining access to this and talking to me about it, they did seem really positive. And I did see some plans for it as well, which showed what they were repairing, the areas that needed doing. Now there used to be, I think, a road up there somewhere, but now I've got to try and get up the other side of this somehow and get to that tunnel entrance. And this is what we can see from the other side. You can see some temporary roof shelters up there. That's what this is, likely for building. These houses would have been here probably long before the viaduct. And everything else around here is pretty new. Hops Lane, because at the other side of the viaduct was the brewery. And then there was a mill where those new builds are under that viaduct there. And this is it underneath the viaduct. There we go. Imagine that as your balcony there, it's not going to get much sun with this thing shading you. But we need to go up here and we can get to the other side. Here we are at the other side of that viaduct. I think it's something like 219 feet long. This is the original boarding that's been blocking people from getting up. They've not moved that. But there did used to be a tree that went across it, so they've cut that down. You can see there's a bit of patchwork there marked for repair 
and we've got some sleepers we've got the chair holes in there rotten very likely put here as they were lifting the track possibly in about 1960 the line was open from 1961 Now we're going to be walking away from the viaduct now and we're straight onto an embankment one that disappears quite rapidly you can see the viaduct there behind me it's quite overgrown you can see trees and when you walk these old railway lines these trees were never here while the line was in use obviously maybe not obvious to some but that includes the embankment there must have been quite a sight. Steam trains hurtling along them. The noise, the clanking, the screeching of the rails and the wheels on them. But the embankments themselves. Incredible, impressive feats of engineering. And as I've just mentioned, there were never trees on them. They were incredibly well maintained. And they must have been black. Jet black. Because of all the clinker, coal and coke getting pulled out of the fireboxes, dumping underneath the chains and spilling out under the track. And I found some of that. There we go. Evidence of your steam trains from the Halifax High Line. Now it's done nothing but rain in England for the past few weeks. I suppose you foreigners might be saying, uh, what's new about that? It is winter after all, eh? Uh, what is new about that? But we have had an exceptionally wet summer as well. And this here is the track bed. Unmaintained nowhere for the water to go so it makes its own routes and own rivers and now we're straight into a cutting probably 100 meters 150 meters from the viaduct and this what we've got coming up now is a tunnel it's an 819 yard tunnel so it's a fair size I have seen recently that it's open but I don't know if it still is honestly this, look at this can you see my footprints in there it is like a bog which doesn't hold well for the inside of that tunnel if we can even get in let's find out when we get there here I am here I am at Wheatley Tunnel entrance there you can see it beautiful arch there and if you want to know if I get in there you're going to have to like, share and subscribe and I will see you in the next one take care Today we're going to be going from Wheatley Tunnel all the way through to Homefield Station. 
I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you this tunnel. It's a Wheatley tunnel, it's an 819 yard beast on the edge of Halifax. We can see we've got a retaining wall, we've got some little retaining walls down here. These ones are probably broken and fallen down. But it comes from the viaduct, more or less, 100, 200 yards, if that, straight to a tunnel. We've got this beautiful blue, black engineering brick here. You can see how wet this place is by the ferns there. And down there, there's like a river coming down there. So you know it's gonna be wet inside there. We've got that huge retaining wall, really nice. We've got beautiful chamfered stone at the top. Brick pillar with a stone coping at there. And this side is a cutting with a, a stone retaining wall. Now it is incredibly wet. This is like a river here. That is probably about six inches deep if I foot, put my foot in that by mistake. Now I was tipped off that this might be open, but it's not, sadly. So we're not gonna be able to get in it. But to be quite honest with you, I'm here on my own today and I wouldn't go in these alone. You need somebody with you just for a safety aspect. Never mind having the shit scared out here. But you can see the size of this. There you go. You can see the stones around the edge, there's a keystone in the centre there. Green and mouldy. It's not in bad nick, really. Now, I believe it's not in that bad a condition inside either. There are photos of this tunnel online, so you can look it up, the Wheatley Tunnel. We're not going to be able to get in. It is this door here, padlocked, and it's also piled up with rubble at the bottom. And also we've got the double doors there that are wide enough for a vehicle. Got two padlocks on it, got the one that you can see on the chain, and there's one in that box there but it is dark and scary and I'm not going in there on my own. But I will hold the camera up just so you can see and it sounds soaking inside there. Now this tunnel used to be straight and I will put up, put up a picture that's got the blue retaining wall in it and we can see straight through that tunnel. 819 yards, probably one of the straightest tunnels you could ever see. Part of the Queensbury line, or lines, and there are probably where I'm stood now, within 10 miles, at least five, six, maybe eight tunnels where I am, because you've got Clayton, Queensbury, uh, Lee Bank, there's another one a bit further down from Lee Bank, you've got this one here, and that's without even looking at a map. But I have looked at the map and I know there's, there's probably around eight to ten tunnels around here. It's getting higher, isn't it, that number? So, as soon as we can't get in this tunnel, there is, on the top, a ventilation shaft about halfway. It's only got one ventilation shaft, we'll show you that, because above ground it's quite an unusual one. Below ground it's round, on top it is square. The other end is filled in. And there is a, a shaft that goes all the way down like a manhole that can get in at the other side of this tunnel. I'm going to see if I can find that manhole cover because I know where the other end is. It's been built on, it's a housing estate and we'll go all the way through to the end of the line. Here I am at the top of the embankment. That lovely neat line there is the blue brick wall. You can see the tunnel entrance there. There is a road but where the mouses are up there. And then, I don't know how deep this is, but it's gotta be deep. Get up to the uh, ventilation shaft. 
I was hoping we could get close to this, but as you can see, it's padlocked. That's it there behind me. I'll turn the camera around. So I've poked you through the fence there. That is what it looks like. It's square. It is capped off with a small hole in it. You can see it from Google Earth. And we've got the Department for Transport stamps on there. As you can see, you don't want anybody getting in that. Now, believe it or not, I am at the eastern portal of Wheatley Tunnel. It's buried. It's about 50 feet down from where I'm stood. And there should be a manhole cover that will drop down into a shaft into the tunnel, but I can't find it. I can't see where it is, but I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you what it's like where I am. So those houses are built on top of the tunnel and somewhere around here, in this small section between that garage which is on the track bed because this is now a cut-in and somewhere around here there should have been a manhole cover now i'm unable to find it i've had a good look around i can't see it anywhere i've scraped around on the floor there's nothing uncovering it but there is a photograph of this portal it's the only one i've found and it is taken from the next road bridge, which is on Keithley Road, and that's where we'll rejoin our track. Now that's it, amongst there somewhere, that's where the manhole cover is. The garage is built on top of the cutting, and everything else there now is built on top of the cutting, which is about 50 or 60 feet deep when it left the tunnel. So that's where we've just come from up there. You've got this wall here, and these walls here are likely original. But if you look there, you can see bridge walls. This is Keithley Road Bridge. Now this bridge was about 50 feet deep. And you can see at this side, it has been filled in and built on. And that is what is left of Wheatley Cutting. There is a photograph taken, stood about there, looking back at the Eastern Portal. And I will put that up for you. Now it's pretty amazing that the walls are still here. They could have easily just knocked it down to fill it in, but they left the bridge, they filled it in, and I fully suspect that it's all under there, the arch and everything. So that's my side, and that's the other side. Next we're gonna to go to a footbridge. I think it is still in situ. It's on a, probably a hundred meters that way, towards home field but the cutting has completely gone. Now that is Keithley Road where that truck is and there's a public road down at the side here. This used to be a school when there was a railway here. Uh, that's knocked down now. But then we come to this footbridge here, this, well this footpath would lead to a footbridge over the railway, the cutting. I don't know what's left of it. I don't know if there's anything left of it. But let's have a look. Now this looks all suspiciously new. And that's a depression there. And I think this could be where the footbridge was, where I am now. Because that looks like an embankment. I'll just put you through the fence. That looks like an embankment. I mean, sorry, a cutting. Because we go down to an embankment over there. So this is highly likely where the footbridge was. Let's see what we've got here. Let's just have a quick look at this footpath area because the wall cuts off here and it goes up to another wall up there yeah these houses were here during the time of the railway along with the gardens and you can see how old this is now what i thought was a, a cutting embankment type area is just piled up mud so this is where the bridge was still public right of way 
It's just been converted into a footpath as the cutting was filled. Uh, I'll have a walk down there. I'll see if I can get down there. I've got to the end. There's a public, well, there's obviously a public footpath. There's a street lamp there. Not like it's maintained, but it has been cut off there. But I need to get to this pad here, which I can access from up there. And this is where we'll switch back on. So I have made it onto the pad. We were just over there. But where I am stood now, you can see that public footpath behind me here. It used to cross here, straight to there. And there used to be a bridge here, but that's no longer gone. I am actually stood on the track bed, cutting filled in. But as you can see, it's built up around me. And now we can see the cutting again, and I'll turn the camera around and show you. So where that wall is, there used to be access through there many moon ago. Oh, that's a tree. I thought it was maybe a fancy pillar or a gatepost of some description. I'm on the trap bed. This is the cutting down here. Sorry about the wind. You can see the back fill in there. And it probably goes fairly deep. I don't know if I can walk alongside it, but I'll try. Just before I move down that cutting while I've stood on this pad, this is where the trap bed was. That is where the footbridge was. And beyond that is Keithley Road Bridge. The one that was about 40, 50 feet deep. Somebody took a photograph of this footbridge and it was iron. That's why it's gone. So someone took a photograph of that footbridge, stood under the other side of Keithley Road Bridge, looking to where we are. And I'll insert that now, and then we'll go and have a look at that cutting. Now this is what remains of Wheatley Cutting. It's down there, it's still got a bit of backfill coming in, tumbling down from up there where we were just a moment ago. And down there is the cutting. There's no way it's wide enough for two railway lines. But that's it. There is a little hole in the fence down there, but there's no way I'm getting down there. This has all been sectioned off as private land. I'll go around to the other side and see what we can see. Now that fencing is only sectioned off a small area, but it looks to be on an original boundary wall, or what's left of it. I mean, what looks to be a, a bit of a rubbish dump. But near this tree root, I think we can get to the edge of the cutting again. You can see that there. I wonder if I can get a better view from around the side. I've about come to my limit of where I can follow along the track side now. There we go. That is our track bed. Down there. I'm at my limit. The next thing it goes to is an embankment and then to Shear Lane Bridge, I believe. We'll see you there. Not quite at Shear Lane Bridge, but as you can see, this is our cutting edge. And now you can see why it's going to go onto an embankment and then it's going to turn around and go into Homefield Station and we'll cover that. That's Shear Lane. Sorry about that one. That is Shear Lane just down in that valley. And we'll get to that bridge next. Now here we are on Shear Lane. This is our last bridge on the actual Halifax Highline. Sorry about the wind, but it's a breezy day. But as you can see, you've got an embankment up there. The bridge would have gone across here, and this is all that remains at this side. Nothing. Absolutely demolished. I've just quickly come to the other side, so you can see it from this side. The top of that embankment is private land. We're not going to be able to get up there. But this industrial estate it would have gone all the way around there, round the back, over towards the station where you see where that chimney is, and we'll get over there next. But before we do, we've got this huge piece of stonework, working, face chamfered. It looks suspiciously like one of those up there. So we'll move on, and we shall get to the station.
just before we get down to the station this is the final bridge for us the platforms were down there here your lines here this is our iron bridge we will go down on underneath because the gentleman in that facility there has given me permission to access it but down here is the last remains of a cutting which is bogged overflowed and if you look down there you can see they are doing some work on this bridge we can access that but i don't particularly want to anywhere there's no need to you can see it's heavy stone work sorry about the wind but what i did want to show you is there's a photograph, that's the steps. There's a photograph taken here looking down onto the platform. So I will try and match that up for you. And then there was also another one at the other side there, which was the steps down onto the station. Now we'll get down on the station and I will try and match the photograph up. You can still see the arch at the top. And this was your access to your platforms at Homefield Station. Leaving the bridge behind us, we've got Homefield Mill there, and there used to be a track that ran into the sidings there. However, I've had a walk around, they don't exist. There are no tracks or remnants of virtually nothing of anything at this site anymore. Over there, these buildings here, that before it was the breakers yard, was known as the sidings. A gentleman in the facility that, who's granted us permission to go on his land informed me. As you can see, it is a breaker's yard now. You can probably see the specialising 4x4. But all that there used to be brickworks, sidings and an engine shed. And we'll get down to where the platform was. So we've got the lovely hills up there. Now those will eventually turn into where Clayton Tunnel and Queensbury Tunnel goes off to. And that is the site of Homefield Station, the end of the line for us. This was opened in October 1878 by the Great Northern Railway. There is literally nothing left of the site. It is completely redeveloped and I believe that was done in 18, uh, sorry, in uh, 2008 I think planning permission was to redevelop this site. Now over there this is all goods yards up there where you can see the chimney over there that goes off to uh, Homefield Mill which had a line going through it. Now where this building is here and just slightly over there was the brickworks. Absolutely nothing left. At the other side of that there was an engine shed, two engines, with two, uh, capable of supporting two engines. Now I'm going to go over here I am on what was the platform. I have got some photographs to match in because, bearing in mind, this, this is your platform coming out. Where that red door is, is roughly where the railway lines were. Going straight through. There is nothing here to indicate there was a railway station. Now it became a junction railway, did Homefield Station on the opening of the Halifax High Level Railway, which is what we've just been to. Now there is only one thing here remaining to give this away as being a railway station. Well, or even a railway through here. So now we're on the track bed. You can see what's coming up through there. We've got a railway bridge. This is currently under repair. That bit there, what's in, embanked up here. This would have been the platform and buildings, platform edge coming down here. 
obviously the lines going through the tunnel. Up there, here, was access to the station and there was a similar one on the other side. Now, very little remains to show that this was once a, a busy junction with the mills, wool, bricks. There's a bit of cutting at the other side of that bridge, but that's bogged over and flooded. I can't really access it. And you're going to be able to see how wet it is at the moment. Now, roughly where I'm stood, on the 24th of July, 1880, there was a death. Unfortunately. Now, that was a Mrs. Martha Ann Rotherer. Now, I've looked her up and she was a part of the Tetley family. And Rotherer and Tetley were very common surnames in this part of West Yorkshire at that period. Now, she was killed on the Homefield Railway Station and she was hit by the 5.28pm PM express train from Bradford to Halifax. So that's coming from this way, steaming through where this building is and going off that way. But she was hit. The report said that she was carried forward by the engine and cut to pieces. Now Martha wasn't the only person who was killed that day. There was also a porter called Charles Clark. Seeing that she was in danger, ran to help her, but he was also struck and killed. The dead hero. Now I suspect under this embankment here is all the ruins of the buildings. And this is the remains of the railway bridge. You can see just how wet this is at the moment. Lots of rain, as I've been mentioning. That is your staircase down. And if we look at that side as well, we'll go a bit closer, but that bit there is where it went down. We've got the walls there. And it looks like we've got a fireplace. But I doubt that's a fireplace. It's got hinges on it. Metal work there. So likely a storage area for tools. We've got this huge plinth here. We've still got part of the steps coming out there. Down onto what was the platform underneath here. And I suspect all the buildings that were on here are being bulldozed into there. I think if I owned this building, I would be tempted to have a rake through that lot. Now you can see I'm on the track bed. This bridge has currently been strengthened. The guys are not here today who are working on it, but this is their access way in. The gentleman in this building here gave me permission to come round here so we have got full permission. This is the end of our line. This railway bridge. And as you can see, we've got this piece of metal here that goes underneath all the way through. I'm still not certain what they are, but I suspect them were for deflecting soot and sparks rather than it hanging on underneath the bridge. Even though this is a girder bridge, steel girder bridge. And then we'll just have a quick look down here because the platform was also at this side. I'm now on the trap bed again. There we go, that's your railway bridge. Like that. And then there, another top step. We've got some engineering brick there. It looks a bit too modern, so does the mortar to be part of the railway. Especially when I look at this line of engineering bricks here. Different pattern, right, in the brickwork. But that's your steps down there. In fact, I can zoom that in a little bit for you. You can see that was the access to this platform.
I'll just have a quick look at this bridge again before we go anywhere. Hope you've enjoyed this series of the Halifax High Line. Closed a long time ago to passengers, 1917, 1st of January, but some people tell you it was the 31st of, of December, um, 1916. Either way, that's when it closed to passengers, except for the odd excursion in the 20s and 30s. So, if you have enjoyed this series, or this episode even, hit that thumbs up button Hit the subscribe button, completely free, and I will see you in the next one.